Hi everyone, my name is Ryan Johnson. I look after the technical field team in the Asia Pacific region. I'm coming at you from Melbourne, Australia, or about an hour's north from a little town called Woodend. And very excited to be taking you through my talk about fun with queries, tip tricks, tips, tricks, and a walkthrough of a relatively, I'd say, advanced query. Hopefully you'll get something out of this and um, let's go. So up front, um, three points I'd like to make. Number one, there is nearly always more than one way to solve a problem. Um, you indeed, you indeed, you might have a better solution or a more elegant solution to what I'm about to show you today. So don't think I'm trying to be too prescriptive. This is just one way I found to do it. Number two, any best practices? Well, they're my own, um, but what are yours? Um, I absolutely mean that. I am constantly learning new things about our platform every single day from my peers, from my customers. Um, so share share and share alike. And number three, um, the recordings and, and the slides will be made available. So um, let's go. So I'm going to walk, be walking you through how we're going to um, construct a report on how many times a particular user logged in uh, or attempted to log in before they failed to do so. So this has obvious security implications, but I'm going to teach you a couple of techniques here which have much wider ranging um, uses but we're gonna focus on this one because it's relatively straightforward. <clears throat> so step one, the base search. Now, before we can solve any problem, we have to know a little bit about our data. So we're gonna explore the data. Um, so, we can, and so we can retrieve just the data that's required to solve the problem at hand. And there's some recommendations I make around this. Number one, select a static time range to work with. Number two, get a controlled replay of the scenario so you know what you're working with. And number three, you're going to apply a filter to limit the results to a subset of the data while you're creating the query. Now, for this search, we're going to use our demo environment. And this is the Okta lab. So if some of you may be familiar with Okta, it's a single sign-on service. So I can see in the last 60 minutes, I've had 16,678 messages. Well, I want to make this a static time range so I can actually play with the data. And you can see if I run this again for the last 60 minutes, I get a different value. So let's just choose a time that is no longer being written to, namely between 12 a.m., 9 a.m. this morning and 12 noon. And I have that there. So now here's my labs and I want to explore the data for login activity. So maybe I don't know what that looks like yet. I'm still exploring my data. And I can see that's filtered this down to 1,400, 431 messages. Now, this is where I might start working with one of my, uh, someone um, in my environment or a prospect to say, hey, can you try logging in for me or failing to log in and then succeeding? In this case, I've recruited Alexander and I've said, can you log in nine times and then uh, attempt to log in nine times and then log in successfully once? And well, I've got 11 events, so I'm nearly there. But let's say I, so I need to explore my data just that little bit more. And maybe I want to check out, you know, what type of events are in here. So I'm going to pass this out and run this. And now I can see over here, this looks like a solid use case. So user session start. I'm going to use this as I build this out. Now, the other thing I'm going to want to do is that just restrict my data just the data that's being returned to just that information. So I can be confident that now I'm just dealing with the information that I need to solve the problem. Okay. So let's keep going. Now, before I go any further, one thing I will recommend to everybody, and I do this internally and to my prospects, is comment. Um, yeah, I, I would hope, or maybe a lot of you have got some um, scripting or coding um, experience, you know what the benefits of coding is. Um, and particularly for myself as, as a semi-logic representative, I treat this as, treat writing queries as an educational exercise. So someone can come along and say, well, this is why they're doing this. Um, this is, for those who have done the admin course around what know what the scheduled view is, um, this is just a little gotcha. If you use double slash comments in creating a scheduled view, um, this may actually um, unexpectedly comment out box of code. And so from, for the context of what we're talking about today, don't worry too much, but that's just a little gotcha there. But let's keep going with the actual scenario. The next step 
is we want to parse and filter out the relevant events. In this case, we want to know the login, the, the activity uh, or the action, whether it was successful or failed, and the username who actually did it. So let's go back over here. Now, I want to find out the event type. So this is the one I wanted. We could use JSON, um, but you may have seen on the previous page, our parse anchor is probably one of the most useful ways to, or the most efficient ways to parse information out. Submit, and run this. It's going to do a little bit of a tidy up up here. Keep adding parentheses. Um, and then we want to explicitly filter to these login attempts. Now, the reason I do this is sometimes there may be events in my um, data stream that contain login, user, session, and start. So we want to make sure we are 100% honest seeing those. I don't expect this value to change too much. 4,019, it doesn't. Next step, as mentioned before, is you want to get the, the username and the uh, outcome, so the action. I'm going to run this. Here's a sum I prepared earlier, obviously, because we're tight on time today. So now I have my username. I guaranteed this and success or fail, whether, whether it succeeded or failed. So I have enough information to run with and continue what I'm doing. That was step two. So let's go to step three, which is aggregation. You want to aggregate to all the values that you need and you aggregate early. And what I mean by that is as soon as you aggregate, you open up a whole raft of um, features and functionality and also performance improvements because um, Sumo is a microservices architecture. The You throw a query into aggregation land, we're putting new uh, resources, new processes against it. So things are generally going to run quicker as well if you aggregate. Um, just the best practice here, always aggregate before you apply lookup, whether it's a geo lookup, whether it's your own personal lookup or even now threat intelligence. It'll make things run quicker. And also rename your panels, your outputs to something useful to you. So make sure it means something to you, not just to you, but to anybody who may be looking at this later. So let's go, let's do this. So once again, I'm just gonna paste this in here. Aggregate to events for quicker processing and sorting. I want to count as auth attempts, so it's clear what my the output of my aggregation is, successful or failed, um, by message time, which is the internal field name for the timestamp. So if you put your mouse over here, we should see something like that. Um, the action, whether it's successful or failed, and the username who ran it. Let's just run this one more time. And so now, apart from you know, this epoch milliseconds view of time, which we're going to address later on, this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, I am going to do one other thing here, which will become clear right at the very end. I'm actually going to normalize the value of action into lowercase. So to be either success or failure. And the, the reveal will be at the end on that one. So now, we've got this nice view of, yep, one failed login attempt by Pram at this time. Okay. Now I'm gonna introduce you to the technique I call, well, I've dubbed segmenting. It's useful for calculating how many times did X happen before or indeed after Y happened. Um, it uses a field that I call counter, um, sort and accume, which is a really useful tool. Um, we'll explain why in a second to identify sequences that have a reset event. So logins before a successful login, or you know, gigabytes downloaded before a time of day, or you know, failed logins or failed code deployments before a successful one. So this is where I'm saying this technique has much wider ranging implications than the use case I'm showing you, and hopefully you'll take something away from this that you can reuse in your environment. So let me take you through it. Um, this is kind of at a high level. I'll take you through as a part of the query language in just a moment. So step one, this is largely what we had in Sumo Logic you saw just before. An unordered list, but it still has the time, the user, and whether they succeeded or failed. So the first thing I want to do is we want to assign a value of one to our reset events. In this case, the failed logins before a successful event. So that's our reset event. So we've created a field called counter. Step two, we're going to apply a sort by fields and the timestamp in a descending fashion. Now, 
you don't actually have to do the by the user, but it makes it easier to kind of digest with your human eyes and human brain. But you can see here, I have sorted this in reverse chronological order, the most recent to the least recent. And something's starting to come together here that hopefully you're picking up on. Step three is we're going to use our accumulate oper accum operator. So we're going to accumulate the counter as a segment by fields to enumerate the reset events. And what do I mean by that? We've got, so success, if I accumulate one, it's one. If I add null, it's still one. Add null, it's still one. Add null, it's still one. So I'm at this, uh, hopefully you can see my cursor, but it's uh, on the table over here on the fourth row. But then I have another success, right? Success, so I add one to that, it becomes two, two, and two. So what's actually happening here is I'm blocking out segments that I can actually use to calculate against later. So if I click one more time, you'll see it becomes a little bit clearer. So here's my failures before a success, failures before a success, etc. And number three is we're gonna use our aggregation operator of choice to segment these fields, uh, to aggregate by segment um, over the field. So I can see there were, if I do a total number of failures by segment, I get one, two, three, three for segment one, two for segment two, and four for segment three. So that's the theory. Let's see it in practice. First thing you want to do is you want to give a successful logins a counter value of one, which we can see here. And it's not ordered yet, so we're going to order this. Sort by username and message time. Once again, the sorting by username is optional, but it just makes it easier for us to look at. Because if I scroll down here, I should quickly see, well, here's a scenario that we're going to grab onto. Here was a failed login before a successful login by Tony. So let's make our segments and we're going to use our QM operator to do that. And let's see what, let's see that thing from Tony now. Here we go, segment one for Tony. So there was one login, one failed login before a successful one here. Okay. But now we're actually going to do, oh, actually, that's it. That's actually, we've created our segments. So let's go back over here. So in fact, I gave you a sneak peek there. We've just done everything we see here. Um, or nearly everything. We've done our counters. So let's actually put this together. Now there's just a little mathematical trick we're going to, trick we're going to use here. I'm going to repurpose the counter value to help me count the number of failed logins. So it's just an absolute value of the counter minus one. So essentially I'm flipping the bit. So if we scroll down and see Tony again, what we'll see is that failed is a one. And then I want to grab the total counters as failures before success by segment and username. And any time now. I must have paused it, my apologies. Okay. So if I scroll down again, I can see there we are. There's Tony. One failed login before the successful one. Great. So last step, presentation. Let's make sure this, well, it looks good. Make sure it's, view, regardless of whether you're writing for your own eyes or for your manager or even for the CEO or your CISO in this case, you want to alias the fields, particularly if they're going to be in a dashboard to be human readable. Fix, fix any niggling issues if they exist. Restrict the output to what's needed. And the last step is to parameterize for usability. Now, that, that means if you want to use this as a part of your workflow. Um, let's paste that in. So I'm going to do all those things in one control V sort by message time. I'm going to format the date, create a field called successful login time. I'm going to rename failures before success as failures before success. So prepending this with a percentage sign allows you to use spaces as part of field names, but you will have to use this whenever you refer to the field name in future. So if I run that, Great. 
And probably the last thing you want to do is just to say where, and this is just to illustrate the point I just said before, where failures before success is greater than zero. And the first one I should see, well, I'll see things down here like, here we go. So already we can see that there are some pretty um, persistently bad users. Now this is, um, this is being run over um, synthetic data, so I would expect to see a lot of this. Now the last thing I want to do is parameterize. And what I mean by that is, let's make this a bit more usable to say a level one user. And we've created this parameterized field. I say we want to manage this. The default value is an, a wildcard. I'm going to use any. We searched, save, close. So now I've got this nice form-based view that you know your level one analyst might be able to use. And I want to say, what's Tony been up to? And now I have a nice view of you know all the success and all the fails that the various Tonys have had in my environment. Now the last one for bonus points is if you're consistent about how you maintain your data taxonomy, as in what you call your fields, you have the advantage of being able to do code reuse. So if I go over here, so this is Duo. Duo is semi-similar to um, um, Okta, it is a multi-factor authentication, but it still logs success and failed logins by user. So I did all that parsing, but if I just paste in every single same bit of code I just had there before, <clears throat> it works. And there are implications where you can apply this across the board after that. And with that, I think I'm a little bit over, but Thank you everybody for tuning in, paying attention. Really appreciate it. Um, hope you learned something and um, hope you enjoy the rest of our user conference. Thank you.